Welcome back to Finnegan Begin Again. In this episode, we're going to take apart the transmission, and we're going to do that by starting with this pin, which goes through both of the uh, shafts that hold the reversed gear on and the, uh, the gear cluster, countershaft gear cluster in place. And there's supposed to be a cotter pin on the end of this, but there is not. Don't worry, we'll replace it when we get back to reassembly. But basically, you just take it with a brass drift or something, and you just hammer it out the other way. It's not in there super tight, which is why the cotter pin's needed. And then I'm going to go ahead and readjust the transmission housing here so I can finish taking that pin out. But while we're here, you can see this lobe here is uh, lower than the other one. And also there's the number 78 there. And both of those indicators, well 78 obviously, but that if that other lobe is lower, you can visually tell that this is the transmission housing for a 1939. So out comes the pin pretty easily. Step one complete. Next, we're going to press in this shaft, which is going to release the reverse idler gear. And for now, once you, you know, push it in far enough, you'll actually hear the gear drop off. And for now, it's fine that it just is, sits in the bottom of the transmission case. And we'll take the rest of the, you can kind of see that uh, um, curve there was the gear. So now we're going to move to the front of the transmission. Here we're releasing the, um, the spring that returns the uh, clutch disengagement bearing, the throw out bearing, which you saw rotate there, and its own housing takes that off. And that's the fork that uh, when you press the clutch pedal, uh, rotates forward and moves that throw out bearing to disengage you know, the clutch from the engine. And we're eventually going to take that out. Um, not right now. Um, I'm following the Van Pelt instructions on how to take the transmission apart. But as you'll see later, there are certain improvisations I had to make. So that fork is held in by a um, basically kind of a rivet, a pressed in pin um, that we're going to have to remove later. But it slides really well, basically because the bushings and the sides of that are shot. But moving on to the next thing we're going to go ahead and take the housing for the input shaft off this is uh they call this the um bearing retainer um basically when you screw this on bolt this in it is the uh pressing on the rotor ball bearing inside that is uh keeping the front roller bearing in place and it just comes off fairly easily. This one looks like it had a little bit of silicone uh, put around it. You don't want to do that because you don't want little pieces of silicone going down into your bearing or back into your transmission. This has a hole, which I'll show you later, kind of underneath the input shaft. You can see there where it's actually designed to have any um, transmission fluid or grease that comes out drain back into the cavity of the transmission housing. So we're going to take that drift again, and there you can see the opposite end of the countershaft. And uh, you press it out from this side. And I put it in, you know, fast because it was kind of a, a little bit of a bear to get it started. But once it started going, it went pretty easily. And all you need to do is really get it free of the front and as you can see here back at the back where we've pressed that out and now you can use the pin that we removed as a gripper and pull it on out you get to a certain point where um because the counter shaft is riding on that it's putting some weight on it so it gets a little bit tougher and then but you get to a point where afterwards it just falls off and that gear cluster then falls into the bottom of the transmission housing that bolt that you see right there um, on the output shaft is uh, designed to keep that bearing in place while you've got the, the back end of it off. So now we're going down to the inside. What you see sticking out the front there is that I'm about to pull out is the input shaft. And that means it's the input into the transmission, meaning it's taking the, that's a synchro ring. That's taking the, um, power of the engine and putting it into the transmission. So input into the transmission. 
and that comes off easily. We'll take all of those pieces, parts off later, do an inspection of them and see what we need to replace. Next, we're going to work on getting the synchro hub out, but we're going to need to replace a couple or remove a couple of pieces prior to being able to get that out. Um, the first one of those is a, a spacer ring, which comes out pretty easily, and I'll get to that in just a second. I have no idea what I'm talking about on this, but I'm sure it was important. There you can see my watch, which I use to control the camera. All right, so we're just using a flathead screwdriver and it just pops out of its groove fairly easily. And this is, you know, pretty robust little ring. And as you can see, when I take it off, it, it does not need to be replaced. It can be just put back in when we reassemble, clean it up. Next comes the bear. This is the biggest pain in the butt, this snap ring. Um, you can't use a snap ring removal tool because the ends of it are not set up for a snap ring removal tool. So you're just gonna have to fight it. And I fought it for a while, so we're not going to watch all that. We're just going to put it in time-lapse. And eventually I do figure out a good method using a pick and a flathead screwdriver where you just kind of got to go around it and get it off of all of those individual tabs one at a time. It's a little frustrating because you make one little motion, it feels like the thing just the entire snap ring goes back into place. You have to start from square one. See, like that, but it didn't go all the way. Yeah, see, there we go. Now, this snap ring is definitely gonna to need to be replaced because I am boogering it up as I am getting it out. And, uh, but don't worry, all of these pieces, parts to rebuild a transmission are very available on the internet. Um, replacing, you can buy an entire replacement kit that has all of these consumables available. And um, it's kind of fun because I never knew how to transmission worked and by doing this rebuild, I. I understand it. I'm not, you know, the best with gear ratios and things like that, but I at least understand the mechanics of how this transmission works. So when I'm actually shifting the, the gears, I know I can visually see in my mind what I'm doing. Whereas before it was just a mystery box. Yeah, there we go. There's that snap ring and you can see it's bent all the heck and back. So we're gonna be replacing that. Now that that's free, we can now get the um, synchro and synchro hub off. We're gonna take it out as one piece. Um, it's being kind of held in place uh, by the, um, uh, oh, I forget what they're called, but they're these little um, flat pieces of metal that are held in by a ball and spring, and they provide the tension on each of the, um, the tangs of the synchro hub. <laughs> And that is what, when you shift gears, you hear a click, click. That's kind of what's doing that, as well as the detents in there. So there we go. You've got a little spacer washer there. Um, the teeth section inside of that slides out. There you go. I'm pointing at the, the tabs, the retention uh, tabs. Oh, that little washer fell off, so let's fish that out. So there you go. That is the second, third gear shifter hub with synchros. Now there's a, you can see how there's a, two sets of synchro teeth there because there's another synchro ring back there and then the other teeth are attached to second gear. If these are okay, and we'll, we'll check them out later, but one thing you're looking for is you're looking for any excess wear on these. Uh, the teeth there that I'm pointing at, they should be sharp, shouldn't be rounded off um, or uh, dulled down. And then you also want to make sure that the um, grooves inside of there that are helping to move the oil aren't smoothed down. Um, I'm going to replace both of these just to be sure. You know, I'm here. Why not? They're not expensive. Here comes second gear. It just slides right off. Now, second gear is a problem because that bearing that's inside of there, you can't get just that bearing anymore. You'd either have to make your own or buy a whole another second gear that has the bearing included. And there's a spacer, which we will figure out what it does later. It's important for this output shaft setup. 
So that's the output shaft, and it should, according to Van Pelt, we should be able to take the first reverse uh, gear slider there that you see moving back and forth. We should just be able to slide it off the front. Oh, that doesn't work. Why won't it go? Hmm, why is the book telling me to do something and I can't physically do it? Huh. Well, while I figure this out, I'll go ahead and tell you that a new second gear with the bushing, brand new bushing, which you want, is about $170, unless you can find one cheap or one lying around. So, see that little tab right there? That is what is preventing the slider from coming off of the front, and that is why we had that uh, spacer ring in front, because that sits over that tab. So, I'm gonna have to improvise here. This should come off the front, but like I said, it's being blocked, so we're gonna have to figure out another way of getting this output shaft off. And that includes, what I'm pointing at right now, is we're gonna have to take that rear roller bearing off first, and then we'll be able to get the shaft with the slider off. All right, so yeah, with all of the front portion of it removed, we can just push it out the back. Now I'm gonna use a gear puller to get that bearing off and you know it takes a lot of fidgeting and fussing to get a gear puller to the right position to be able to work so well, time lapse and then we'll quickly get it set up and use our impact wrench to remove that roller bearing comes off pretty easily once it gets started there it goes oh it's so satisfying And we go. So now the first reverse slider will come off the back end of the output shaft, again called output shaft because this is what takes the energy put into the transmission via the input shaft and puts it out the back of the transmission output to the drivetrain and makes the car go. All right, so there's the output shaft all taken apart. There's the first reverse slider. And now that we've got the housing empty, we can remove the rest of what's inside of there, which is the gear cluster, which I'm taking out now. Oh, no, I'm taking out the reverse idler. And there is the cluster gear. Yeah, all one big thing. So uh, with that, on the front and back end of those, you have your thrust washers bearing that um, you need to take a look at. Inside of that is there's a, a couple of roller pin bearings and there's actually a, a spacer shaft inside of there that spaces the bearings out to the proper distance. And those bearings can be replaced very easily. So there's the front, the, the rear um, thrust bearing washer, which sits on the back end of the housing and preferentially wears away instead of the gear cluster. And there are the front ones with some spacer shims that I figured out I don't need to replace when I rebuilt this. And now we're going to finish taking out the reverse idler gear shaft. There's a little bracket inside of there that it rides in and we have to finish taking out. There it is, a little short one. And now with all of this empty, we can go ahead and take a look inside of the housing, empty transmission housing, which we can go ahead and clean up and then eventually take over and get sandblasted, clean up. And then we're gonna paint the inside of this with red gliptol, just like we did the engine. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that pin that's holding the throw out fork in place on the clutch shaft. And this also kind of proved to be a pain um, but, you know, find the right tools. The file that I'm using right there, rat tail file, did not work very well. So, you know, you go to the good old standby of using 
a socket for what it's not intended for. But hey, it fits, it's strong, and look, it's working. Then when that was not long enough anymore, and here I'm just using a shouldered bolt to push it the rest of the way out. So now we need to get the fork off of the shaft and it is kind of, you know, clumsy doing this as the, you can see the whole transmission housing wants to move when I use the drift on it. But you know, slow and steady wins the race. And once you get it to a certain distance, it actually pops out really good. You'll see I get a really good hit on it here in a second, like boom, boom, and like, oh, it just shot out. Well, I'll clean off some of the gunk around that might be causing a problem. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yep, that was a good, ah, see, now it broke itself loose. Now the fork comes off, the shaft comes out, that can be all cleaned, and there I am looking at those bushings, confirming that they're a bunch of crap and need to be replaced. Now, some inspections on the housing that you should do is right here at the front end, you need to check to make sure that the shaft hole, there's not a crack going there and up into the bearing housing. If there is, they say just get a new transmission housing. Also at the back where I'm pointing there, you wanna check out to make sure that that one doesn't have any excessive wear. So that's it. Thanks for joining me on this disassembly and we'll see you next time. Take care.